What's going on, everybody? Welcome. Midweek trivia is here. You are back. I heard the, I, I, I see people giving instruction in the comments, which I always like to see. I love a community that is positive and helpful, and you are certainly that. And I just want to reaffirm for the person who's asking, how does this work? You're going to hear a question read to you by me. It will also appear on the screen with three possible answers. You will tap the one that you think is correct. What is going on? England is here. Hello to you, England. Hello to all the people who are saying hello. Newcastle, Staffordshire, UK. What is going on? Florida. Hello. I hope the weather is treating you well. I know there are a lot of storms moving through the region now heading up to the east, sort of heading up the east coast. Please stay safe, everybody. Ohio. Hello. Sherry Seven Berry. Happy birthday to you. What is up, Spring, Texas? What's going on? Handsome rascal, my goodness. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. Sometimes I make the mistake of going too deep on the internet and finding negative stuff, so I'll take the positive stuff. I'm going to take that as well. You can't just one or the other. Upper Darby, Pennsylvania, what is going on? Got to love, Got to love our Philly suburbs. Hello, Maine. Got the lobster there. Wonderful lobster, fresh lobster rolls there. WWE quiz being asked for. You never know. SummerSlam coming up. We might do just that. Who knows? What's going on? Halifax, Nova Scotia, Mississippi checking in. We are just about ready to get started. So let me do my cross check. Make sure everything is working the way that it should. Because we want this to be a nice, smooth game for all of you. I think we're good to go, so let's begin. Hello to one and all, and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Swag Bucks Live, the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. Take your mind, focus it, then sync it up with your fingers as you prepare to take your shot at today's grand prize. That's $1,000, and everyone who can correctly answer these 10 multiple-choice trivia questions about a variety of topics will split it. Now, even if you don't get a piece of that grand prize, after question number one, you will get one bonus SB for any question you get right. I should just say once again, if you get eliminated from grand prize contention, you can still earn bonus SB for every question you get right. In that case, though, you have to click a claim button at the end of the game in order to keep the bonuses that you earn. It happens instantaneously once you press it. It takes one second. If you're going to stay and play the game, don't leave money on the table. But if you are a grand prize winner today, of course, the bonuses you earn throughout the game are just going to be rolled right into your share of that $1,000 grand prize. And for the newcomers who weren't sure how this works, one more piece of instruction for you, and then we will jump right in. Once per game, the first time you get a question wrong, as long as it is before question number 10, you can rejoin and stay in it, get a second shot, at that grand prize, you can do that with a free rejoin. I'll tell you how to get those later if you don't have any. Or you can spend, generally, it's like one SB, maybe two SB to rejoin, which, with all the bonus SB you'll be earning, might be worth your time. If not, you can just earn bonus SB. I just want you here to hang out and have fun. Now, we like to keep it comments-free during the game, so we're going to get them out of here. And then we are going to proceed to your warm-up for everybody. Here is question number one. In the Bible, who builds an ark? Is it Joseph, Noah, or Moses? Who builds an ark in the Bible? They scoffed at his plan to build a gigantic boat and load it up with two of every animal on earth, but when it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, Noah's ark survived. Noah, of course, is the answer. 99% of you getting that one right. Well done. That classic arc. We all know the shape. Giant boat with like a little house on it. And then all those creatures in there, very orderly in every depiction, just going two at a time up that ramp. But I'm happy to see we have over 30,000, almost 31,000 people in the hunt for a piece of our grand prize. Almost 32,000 playing the game with us today. That is good news and nice to see. And I think we are ready now to move on to question number two. From here on out, you will get one bonus SB for every question you get right, no matter what. Here is question number two. What is the term for a reel of mistakes from a movie or TV show? Are they bloopers, blippers, or blorps? 
what do you call those mistakes? Those of us who were around and watching TV in the 80s might remember Dick Clark and Ed McMahon's show about these. It was called, that's right, TV's Bloopers and Practical Jokes. Bloopers is the answer. 99% of you getting that one right. You know, the thing about this show is it's live. We don't pre-record it. So our bloopers happen in real time. We don't have a reel of them. They just happen, and then we move on. You know, we're all human. All of our hosts. We're all just humans. We make mistakes sometimes. It happens. Let's move on, shall we, to question number three. It's worth one bonus SB. If you get it right, here it is. Realtor Drew Scott and contractor Jonathan Scott are collectively known by what name? Are they the Property Brothers, the Eiley Brothers, or Dr. Joyce Brothers? Drew Scott and Jonathan Scott. When a family is looking for a new home, Drew helps them buy it, and Jonathan turns it into their dream home, which is why they're called the Property Brothers. The Pro Bros, of course, 97% of you getting that one right. You know, if you have uh, HGTV, you probably watched them in several series. They helped rehab uh, and rebuild the Brady house and turn it into the house that you saw on TV. They're very entertaining. And there's a third brother who's involved as well. There are tons of Scott brothers. There's so many property brothers out there to help you with your properties is what we're saying. Let's move on to question number four worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. What is the capital of Austria? Is it Vienna, Berlin, or London? The capital of Austria. What is it? One of the important trading sites of the 11th century. It grew from the Roman settlement called Vindobona. Vindobona. Who knows if that's right? Nowadays, it's Vienna, of course. Vienna is the answer. That is the capital of Austria, Berlin in Germany, and London in England. 96% of you getting that one right. Well done. You know it. Vienna seems like it would be an amazing place to visit. Never been there, but it is on my bucket list. So hopefully someday I'll get to go. And sometimes I think we have people who have played from Austria. And if not, come and join us, Austria. You can't hear me. It's fine. Let's move on to question number five worth one bonus SB. If you get it right, almost 30,000 people still in grand prize contention. Here we go. Q5. What short-lived sport was invented by the U.S. Army? Is it horseback boxing, baseball with cannons, or balloon jumping? Which of those was a sport invented by the U.S. Army? I don't know if this was something they expected would be useful in combat, but just picture it. A bunch of people with balloons strapped to their back jumping around. Balloon jumping is the answer. That is the actual answer. 20% of you getting that one right. Now, baseball with cannons sounds right because the Army would have cannons. And horseback boxing, just I think we all want to see that, but it's not going to happen. I, it just doesn't seem safe for the horses or the people. It seems like a bad thing all around. But balloon jumping was something developed by the U.S. Army and was a sport and didn't last long. Didn't really take over the way we thought it would. Sort of like Spaceball, where they played basketball on the trampolines. Just wasn't, uh, wasn't meant for this athletic climate. But of the 80% of you who got eliminated, and that is a lot, almost all of you coming right back in. We still have almost 25,000 people in contention for a piece of our grand prize. Only 20% of you getting that one right, and I do not blame you if you got this one wrong. They all seem somewhat plausible. But for right now, I think we're about ready to move on because we are halfway done our game. Let's move on to question number six. It's worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Which of the following sports is typically played indoors? Is it rowing, marathon, or racquetball? One of these sporting events is typically played indoors. This sport is part strategy, part finesse, part strength, and part ducking and dodging so the racquetball doesn't hit you somewhere <clears throat> sensitive. Yes, racquetball is the answer. Don't forget to wear your goggles. Maybe wear a cup uh, and just get used to running around, trying to dodge things, and also trying to hit things. And hey, hit with your wrist. Don't. Don't throw your, your elbow and shoulder out. You can do that real easily. Did that in college. 61% of you getting that one right. 38% of you going with rowing, which typically happens uh, out on the river. But I, I know that there are rowing machines indoors, but the actual sport 
would take place outside. So that is the reasoning for that. But of the 40% of you who were eliminated, we had some people come back in Wednesday a little bit harder than some of the other than some of the other days. It gets progressively harder. Tomorrow is our hardest game. But we still have 16,000 people in grand prize contention, a little bit more than that, actually. And we are ready to move on. Only four questions remaining. This next one worth one bonus SB. If you get it right, here is question number seven. John Krasinski is related by marriage to what Oscar-nominated actor? Is it Amy Adams, Bo Bridges, or Stanley Tucci? Three Oscar-nominated, only one related to John Krasinski. Now, John Krasinski is married to actress Emily Blunt whose sister Felicity is both a publicist and the wife of Stanley Tucci. Stanley Tucci is the answer. They are brothers-in-law. 46% of you getting that one right, which means we just lost another 54% of the people still in the hunt for the grand prize, and I hope a bunch of you can come back. We've already had about a quarter of you jump back in. Still almost 10,000 people in grand prize contention. This has been a tough one. But only three questions left at this point. No reason for anybody to go anywhere. Even if you're not in it for the grand prize, there's still bonus SB for you to earn and bonus SB you've already earned for you to claim. So let's move on to question number eight. It's worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here is Q8. What Marvel character's name contains a nod to creator Jack Kirby? Is it Iron Man, The Thing, or Kingpin? One of these characters... The name contains a nod to Jack Kirby. Now, Kirby was born Jacob Kurtzberg, and a nod to his name can be found in the character of Benjamin Jacob Grimm, who is otherwise known as The Thing. Ben Grimm, The Thing, is the answer. Only 21% of you getting that one right. That was our last tough question, and it was tough indeed. 79% of the grand prize people just eliminated on that one. Hopefully, some of you can come back in. But this also means for the people who are left, that that slice of the grand prize just got a little bit bigger for you. But I hope people do rejoin. I hope you stick around, keep playing. There are bonus SB for you, even if you didn't win the grand prize in this game, if you were just eliminated from it. There's more to earn. We got a couple more bonus SB coming your way, including one bonus SB that you can get if you correctly answer question number nine. Here it is. Complete this Khalees lyric. My blank brings all the boys to the yard. Is it milkshake, portfolio, or hard work? Khalees talks about something bringing all the boys to the yard. We don't have to get into what milkshake means, okay? But I assure you that it doesn't refer to ice cream and milk. So we're not, we're not going to get into that. I already said milkshake is the answer, of course. Her milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. That is the answer. 2,537 people have made it to this yard and are ready for our final question. And if you had fun playing this game, as always, tell your friends and family about it. Send a text, send an email, post to social media with the hashtag SBLive and include your share link, which you can find after the game by clicking the invite or get more rejoins button in the main menu of this app. It's important you use that link because when people sign up with it, you get a free rejoin and they do too. Now, tomorrow... We've got a very special game for you. We love these. Video game themed game. It's coming your way tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Please join us then and take your shot at our $1,000 grand prize. It's going to be a fun one. If you're looking at that and going, oh, that's one of the aliens from Space Invaders. You're already going to do well. And I love the job that our, that our design team did. They knocked it out of the park as they always do. Come play our special theme game tomorrow. Video games. And this is sort of a video game, so it's very meta. Now, you can finally skip the pre-wash and take plates directly from the table to your dishwasher with Lemmy Shine's powerful citric S extracts. No harsh chemicals, no toxic residue, but plenty of SB to be earned. Here's what you need to do. Add Lemmy Shine to your list in Magic Receipts, then buy one Lemmy Shine dishwashing detergent 15 count in store at Walmart and earn 150 SB when you upload your receipt. Buy two and earn 500 SB. You have to be a U.S. player to take advantage of this offer, but check it out after the game. Pre-washing the dishes, that's no good. You're going to put them in a dishwasher. Why would you wash them to put them in the dishwasher when you can just use Lemmy Shine and earn SB while doing it? It only makes the most sense in the world. You know what else makes sense? 
getting to our final question because we have 2,568 people vying for a piece of our $1,000 grand prize. About 30,000 of you total still hanging with us. All of you can earn yourselves one bonus SP by correctly answering our final question in this Wednesday game. Here is question number 10. What ancient city was supposedly home to famous hanging gardens? Is it Detroit, Brooklyn, or Babylon? What ancient city was supposedly home to famous hanging gardens? Listed as one of these seven wonders of the world, there's no archaeological proof that they ever even existed. So you'll have to visit the Hanging Gardens of Babylon in your dreams. Babylon is the answer. 2,444 of you knew that one, and you are splitting our grand prize. A hearty congratulations to each and every one of you splitting that thousand bucks, which translates to, by the way, 41 SB apiece. Not bad. Coffee cravings, you must have been craving a win today because you have done it. Congratulations to you. Green Irish. You did it as well. I get it. Stuntman Productions won. Charlize Phillips or Charles E. Phillips and X Factor 9. You were the X Factor in our game today. You made it special. You made it great. All of you did. All of our grand prize winners. And congratulations to everybody who just shows up, keeps playing, earns some SB, and has a good time. I cannot tell you how much all of us appreciate all of you. And as you continue to earn SB, don't forget that you can redeem those SB for PayPal cash or gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, Target, and hundreds of other places. Thank you for playing, everyone. We will be back tomorrow with our special video games-themed game on Thursday. This has been Swagbucks Live, and we will see you then. Take care, folks.